For more on China's Tianwen-1 mission, I'm joined by astrobiologist Keith Cowling. He's an editor of the website nasawatch.com. So, Keith, uh, we know that it is now in orbit set to land on Mars in a few months. So talk to us about what's happening between now and then and, and what we can learn from the journey so far. Well, they're going to uh, be orbiting closer to the planet, and the, there's a landing site, an area they picked uh, in Utopia Planitia, and they're going to be taking some images there just to make sure they know exactly where they want to land. And then, as was mentioned in the setup piece, uh, May or June, they will um, drop the rover, excuse me, the lander and the rover on Mars, and then the rover will go off and do its uh, astrobiology, which for me personally, uh, I just can't wait to, to, to see what that rover finds. Why, why does it take so long? So we're now here in, in mid-February, and we're looking ahead to, to uh, May and June. Well, you know, it's not bad to be cautious when you do space missions. And, uh, you know, getting to Mars is one thing. Many times probes go to Mars and don't make it. Uh, but now that it's in orbit, it's relatively safe. But, they, you know, I would be, you know, a little suspicious if they tried to land, like, tomorrow. And uh, so it's good to be cautious that way. And, of course, you know, as you do these things again and again, you get better at it. And maybe you can do it a little sooner. But, uh, uh, you know, um, they'll be learning quite a bit while they're doing the imaging from orbit. So they'll have a better chance of success. We've spoken to you before about the other Mars missions happening at the same time, including the UAE and the United States. Each have different goals. Could we see any collaboration or sharing of information among these different missions? And how do they vary from each other? Well, absolutely, there is collaboration. I mean, uh, the Tianwen itself has, I think it's uh, Argentina, France, Austria, and a whole bunch of other countries uh, working together on this. Uh, the UAE mission was built in Colorado, launched from Japan, and uh, of course our rover is coming in on the 18th, and that's got collaborators from all over the world. And as is the case on the moon, at Mars, all of the nations involved have, have always been collaborating, and they're collaborating as we speak. And this is a, a trend that we see internationally. For example, with our Artemis program here in the U.S., uh, NASA has led a group of nations to come up with something called the Artemis Accords, which is in a, a set of agreements of nations and how they're going to work together. So you're inevitably going to be seeing this with the moon, not just with the moon, but with Mars and other planets. Because, uh, you know, no one country can do the best job by themselves. And there's a strength in collaboration, which is exactly what is going on at Mars as we speak. And you, you said yourself a moment ago that as an astrobiologist, you can't wait to see what comes back. What, do, what will you be watching for? Well, it's, it, it, there's a lot of scientific -y, you know, language that goes with this. But in essence, the interesting thing about uh, this rover is that it's looking for possibly existing life as right now. Uh, the rover that the U.S. is sending is looking for evidence of past life. And uh, so there's a bit of a difference there. I mean, I would be happy if either of them were successful, but gosh, it would be interesting if uh, we found that there is life on Mars now. It was really cool to see Mars uh, looking up in the sky uh, just several weeks ago, just seeing it there uh, up among the stars. Keith Cowing, always great to hear your take. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.